Hi everyone and welcome to episode 11 of our Configmas 2023. My name is Johan and in this demo I will show you how you can create a nested virtual machine in Hyper-V, for example to build a config manager in Tune Lab. And that means demo time. So first of all, what is a nested virtual machine? It's simply put, a virtual machine in which you run other virtual machines. And this can be very useful for building up lab environments, demo environment, etc. Because when you have everything contained in a single virtual machine, it's very easy to restore that to a non-good state. Now, those that know me know that I absolutely love playing around in lab environments, uh, like this one here. It's a fairly large environment, a good hundred some VMs, I have 17 network cards, I have a few routers. It's a great lab. But it's anything but easy to revert back to a known state. But if you have everything contained in a single VM, restoring that checkpoint, fairly simple. So, to give an example, if I head over to this machine here, Here I have a nested virtual machine running a few VMs inside of it. In this case, you see I have five VMs running. So I've been playing around in this lab for a bit. And if I want to revert that to a known good state, I can simply go ahead and revert that to the previous snapshot that I took or checkpoint as they're called these days in Hyper-V. And within a minute or so, I'll be back to where I started my lab in this environment. So here I have the snapshot I took when I started this setup. And in that scenario I only had a single virtual machine running, not all of them like I had before. But how did I create this? Well, with a healthy dose of PowerShell. So over here I have a PowerShell script that can create a virtual machine ready for nesting. The magic code that makes a virtual machine enabled for nesting or a nested VM is this line here. That's all it takes, that's the only difference. Now, as you can see in the script here, I have a few variables in the beginning that defines things like the name, where to store it, which network I should use, how much memory, disk space, etc. And in this case, an ISO that I want to boot the virtual machine on to actually deploy it. Now, I do recommend to at least put in a few sanity checks in your scripts when creating virtual machines because otherwise that will simply break when you try to create them. So it's a good example here if I would misspell my lab network accidentally. And I tried to run the snippet here, it's going to say, you know what, that network switch does not exist. If I would have too little disk space, I'm trying to give the VM, say, three and a half terabytes instead of a half terabyte, and try to create it, it's going to say, you know what, you need three and a half, you only have three. Or in this case, I'm checking for an ISO file. So if that file doesn't exist, once again, it's going to fail and say, you know what, that ISO that you tried to boot from, it will not work. But assuming these basic variables and, and validations work, I can now go ahead and create that virtual machine. It's going to create the VM, create the network, and boot it from the ISO file start the virtual machine, and then automatically connect to it. Booting from the ISO. And this will connect this virtual machine directly to one of my deployment servers. I'm going to pick a sequence that deploys Windows Server 2019 with Hyper-V enabled. I'm going to give it a name, row 35, and I'm going to put this machine in a work group. I'm 
And now I'm simply going to sit back and relax while this one is being deployed. It's going to take a few minutes, but I will simply edit away that weight and we'll come back in a little bit here. So this is a few minutes later. The machine has rebooted and is now installing the Hyper-V role inside of this virtual machine. And then there will be a final reboot and we'll be ready to use this. So the deployment is now completed. I will close this configuration window. And this means that if I go to the administrator tools, I do have a Hyper-V manager available. And I can now go ahead and create virtual machines inside of this virtual machine. So to do that, I typically use one of our hydration kits. So I'm going to copy one of them over to this virtual machine. And hydration kit is simply an automated way to build up a bunch of different virtual machines. So I'm going to go ahead and copy some files to this virtual machine. Now, this machine may be on the same host as I am. But from a network route, I'm actually behind a throttle network. I'm going to show you. So the IP address of this nested VM is 0 0.35. If I go to that IP address, 35 C dollar, login, I can go ahead and copy file to it. Like for example, an ISO file, a Windows 11 ISO file. So I'm going to copy that over the network. I'm going to create an ISO folder and I will paste it. Now, this is not very quick, is it? As I mentioned, this network gets throttled, even if I'm on the same host, the network route to it is throttled. But luckily, in Hyper-V, I don't have to go over a normal network route. I can use the VM bus to copy files to a virtual machine. So I'm going to pause this one. Close that window. Here I have an hydration kit ISO. That one is almost 15 gigs in size. If I go over to my PowerShell script here, to my tool script, this is where you can see I'm defining a virtual machine. I'm enabled guest services in it, because when I do that, I can use a commandlet called copy VM file that is used in the VM bus to copy files. So here I have a list of files that I would like to copy. So I will simply go ahead and run that section. And it will now uncopy these files over to that virtual machine. And suddenly I get a significant better performance than my 6 megabyte per second or so that I had before. You can also see this in the Hyper-V console. That for Rogue 35, there is currently a file copying going on to it through the VM bus. While this one is copying, I want to show you two other scripts. This script here is a feature that you can use in Hyper-V to give the VMs inside of the nested VM internet access very, very easily. It's a built-in fe feature in Hyper-V. This script here is part of our hydration kit and simply creates all the different virtual machines with the required configurations for me. And these two scripts I'm copying over now to this virtual machine together with the ISO file. Now the files have been copied. I can go over to the virtual machine. Close this one. If I look in my file system, you will see that I had a script here in the script folder and I have the ISO file in the ISO folder. Now I can open up an elevated PowerShell prompt. and I'm ready to create a few virtual machines using the hydration kit. First, I need to have a network. So I'm gonna create myself a virtual switch, it's gonna be an internal one. 
going to call it internal. And then I can go back here and run that script. I have to specify the location for my VMs. It's going to be the root of my C drive. I only have a single volume on this one, about 500 gigs. I will specify the ISO file that I want to boot from. And I will have to specify the network internal. Like this. And now this script will create a few virtual machines. And when they have been created, I can go ahead and deploy them. Now, I do recommend that you start with the domain controller if using our hydration kits, because all the other VMs will actually try to join that domain. Obviously, you can also use this server just as a DNS and DHCP in the event you're doing a bunch of Intune labs, etc. and just want to have a bunch of clients. They will be joined into your Intune tenant, but you're only using this server to provide IP addresses and name resolution to them. But anyway, Go ahead and connect through RDP to this one. Make it a little bigger. It's going to reconnect to this one. Here I see the list of sequences that the hydration kit provides. I will select my DC1 domain controller, hit next, and after about 20 some minutes, I have a domain controller running in this virtual machine. Then I simply move that one to the side and I start to deploy the other VMs. And that means that after a little bit, I now have a self contained lab environment inside another virtual machine. In this case, Rogue 35 on my Hyper-V host. That's all for today. Thank you so much for joining, and I'll hope to see you again tomorrow for the grand final, the last day of our 12 days of Christmas here on Deployment Research. Have a good day. Bye for now.